Hey there, welcome to the first episode of my Doomsday Prepper playthrough. The goal of this playthrough is to last one whole in-game year. There will be multiple parts, so keep an eye out for any new episodes. Here's the scenario. We awaken on January 1st, six months after the metaphorical Dookie hit the fan, our basement battery is running out and we have no more food left. So we must emerge into the overgrown town of Riverside. We only have the clothes on our backs and the bug out bag with bare necessities. Our rain poncho, a knife, two band-aids, and a canteen. Now before we start our journey, I want to thank all my subscribers for helping me reach my 100 subscriber milestone. I know in the last video I just hit 50 so it's crazy that I got so many subs in such a short time. So thank you very much. If you aren't subscribed, go ahead and click that subscribe button and join the time army. While you're down there, might as well leave a like, a comment, and hit the notification bell so you get alerted whenever I post new content, like for the series. Alright, let's get into the playthrough. Meet our prepper, Gregory McGoatsey. You'll be subjected to the horrifying worlds of Project Zomboid very soon. But first, here's his qualifications. The occupation I chose was carpenter. The positive traits are cat eyes, fast learner, outdoorsman, and quiet. The negative trait is out of shape. Now, let's watch the beginning of Gregory's year-long adventure, assuming he isn't devoured by zombies. We start this story like most hardcore League of Legends players in a musty basement. I emerge from the subterranean haven, and there, before my very eyes, lies an overgrown expanse, a haunting testament to the silence that now befalls the once thriving town. Yet, there is no time for contemplation, as I have the pressing need for sustenance and supplies. As the weight of the world above pulls me from the depths, I resolve that dwelling beneath the earth's surface would render my life void of purpose. Luckily, nobody touched my jeep while I was in my basement for six months. But I have to ask myself, does it even still work? Fortunately, it has gas. But I still need to replace the battery, so I decided to check out any other cars around my neighborhood. After clearing a few houses, getting some food, and spending the night in a random house, the next morning I approach a parking lot filled with zombies. Among them is a lone pickup truck. Maybe I can steal the battery from that one if it's in good shape. But first, I'm going to have to either sneak through the crowd or completely distract them. Choosing stealth, I slink amidst the shadows. However, my hopes are dashed when vigilant eyes of the undead lock onto my presence. Knowing I must adapt or perish, I swiftly recalibrate my strategy. I steer my pursuers towards the welcoming facade of a nearby burger joint. I dash into the restaurant, closing the door behind me, and making my way towards the back of the store when all of a sudden, the undead break through the kitchen windows and start pouring in. I head towards the exit, slamming the door on my way out. I know it won't keep them in there, it'll just delay them, but I'll take whatever time I can get. I reach the truck and immediately take the pristine battery out. Time to head home and get the truck running. As I triumphantly return to my not so humble abode, I pop the hood and install the new battery. A moment of regret washes over me as I ponder the condition of this truck compared to the truck I left behind. After replacing the battery, I hopped in the driver's seat and tested the ignition. The excitement of having the running vehicle is absolutely amazing. So now it's time to hit the road and siphon as much gas as I can. Stopping at parking lots filled with zombies wasn't such a good idea because when I was ready to bug out, my truck refused to start. My next stop was at a storage lot. The only useful stuff that I found was some fishing equipment. Next I hit up the office. The main door was locked so I had to dismantle it, giving me access to the unknown treasures behind it. I didn't find much besides farming supplies and a generator. Now I just need to find the manual and oh, another generator. Even though this world is plagued with the chaos, it still manages to shine some light upon me. After a long day of looting, I decide to get some well-deserved sleep. The next morning I wake up and pack the generators in my truck and get back on the road. As I traversed a few miles along the road, I reached a bridge that compelled me to stop and embrace a moment of profound gratitude for the streak of luck I've experienced in this apocalypse. Many others haven't been as fortunate, and pausing here allowed me to truly fathom the significance of my luck. I am truly grateful, but my moment of silence is cut short by a lone pursuing zombie. Seeing as it was once a person with a previous life, I leave it be and continue my journey south. After hours of driving, I reach a quaint little town that contains a small farming store. Unfortunately, the parking lot has a few zombies in it, 
so I take some time to clear my surroundings and ensure that the undead don't encroach upon me during my stay. Among this loot, I find better clothing that will help me tolerate this cold January weather. Not much after, I find some farming books, a watering can, and seeds. These items will be extremely helpful when the weather warms up and I'm able to farm. I quickly search the back of the store and find a bigger backpack, so I quickly transfer my loot. I find another locked door, so I begin to dismantle it and look at the gear behind it. Among the loot is a variety of firearms, but I don't want anything loud that will draw on any attention. So I pick the trusty compound bow. Luckily I managed to find 10 arrows along with it. Once I searched everything, I unpacked my tent I found earlier and got some sleep. The next morning I wake up to faint zombie moans, out in the parking lot, just outside my building. I creep over to the door and open it, eager to get a chance at trying out my new bow. I let the first zombie get close enough so I can line up my shot and I let the arrow fly, killing the zombie immediately. Shortly after I'm pursued by another, but this time when I shoot, nothing happens. I forgot to slot the next arrow, so I retreat to the wall and spin around quickly, having just enough time to send the arrow into the brain of the encroaching zombie. As I embarked on my journey towards the next haven, the fickle hand of fate threw an unexpected twist my way. Mother Nature herself seemed to conspire against me as she began to let snow fall from the sky. The once manageable zombie apocalypse has now become an even more daunting challenge. For the falling snow added a new layer of complexity to the art of survival. Nevertheless, I'm undeterred by the wintry obstacle as I push forwards. With a mix of nostalgia and determination, I arrived at the comforting embrace of a familiar ranch-style house. Its rustic charm welcomed me like an old friend, and I wasted no time in replenishing my water sources with whatever precious water. Raiding the cupboards, I collected the last few cans of sustenance, ensuring that I would have enough to sustain me in the coming days. Ascending the creaky stairs, I reached the upper level where a sense of tranquility enveloped me. As I lay down to rest, my mind wandered through memories of the past and dreams of the future, envisioning the place I would soon call home. As the sun timidly peeked over the horizon on the fifth day, I stirred from my slumber. Getting up and glancing out the window to behold a mesmerizing scene, snowflakes were still cascading from the heavens, gradually adorning the landscape with delicate patches of snow. Realizing I needed to act swiftly before I found myself trapped by the impending snowfall, I swiftly donned my gear and leaped back into the faithful embrace of my trusty truck. The engine roared to life as if it sensed the urgency in my heart. The snowflakes danced and twirled around my windshield, an enchanting spectacle. But I knew I had to forge ahead, bravering the wintry elements and continuing my quest before the snow was embraced tightened around me, slowing down my progress and impeding my path to sanctuary. After what felt like an eternity of relentless travel, I stood at the gates of my long-awaited destination, a formidable prison surrounded by a towering secure fence. My heart soared with relief and intrepidation as I realized that my journey had led me to a potential sanctuary. However, my elation was short-lived, for the prison's courtyard had a few undead guests. Undeterred by the lurking danger, I steeled myself for the night's quick task, which was to take care of them. I dispatched the creatures one by one like a seasoned survivor, reclaiming the courtyard as my temporary shelter for the night. As the moon's gentle glow bathed the prison in an eerie light, I settled into my truck knowing that my work was far from over. Come morning, I would face a new dawn, and with it, the daunting task of purging the entire prison of the undead. Yet, beneath the weight of the challenge, an ember of hope burned within me, for in this prison I saw the potential for a stronghold, a place to harvest my crops, and to continue my fight for survival in the world forever changed. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching, and if you like this kind of content, you should totally click the subscribe button. Also, leave a like and a comment down below where you would hold up in a zombie apocalypse. So thank you again for watching, and I will see you in the next one.